I'll admit it, I do not read as much as I wish I did. I tend to err on the side of being somebody that likes to Netflix and chill. Like literally Netflix and chill, binge watching 14 hours of whatever is the most bingeable show out. However, when I'm going through a time of hardship or feel sad, lonely, depressed, you name it, reading is my best friend. I do a lot of it. And in this video, somewhere it's gonna be up here, I asked you if you wanted me to share my favorite books that I read or have read when I'm going through something hard, and that's what we're doing today. We are gonna talk about all of these. I'm gonna go take a shower first and get ready because I'm going wine tasting with my family, and then we will go over these books one by one. All right, so it is actually just a completely different day in general. Yesterday I took a shower, got distracted, went with my family wine tasting for my older brother's birthday and didn't actually film the rest of this until right now. So before I get into all these books, I do wanna say that this is not an exhaustive list. There are so many books that have been helpful over the years and I can definitely share more later down the road. These are in no particular order, they're just how I put them on my desk. The first one is Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed. If you aren't familiar with her work, you may be familiar with the movie Wild. She actually wrote the book that that movie was based on and she's just a wonderful writer. So what people didn't know about her for a long time is that she was the writer for a column called Dear Sugar. She was the anonymous writer of this column. Later it came out that she was the person behind the column. This is just a collection of many of those stories. It deals with so many different topics. I love her humanness, I love her directness and her honesty. It's just, she's a very, very real person and very relatable. So this one is fantastic. When Things Fall Apart by Pima Chodron, I may be saying that last name wrong. This is, says hard advice for difficult times and it draws on traditional Buddhist ideas. I remember just totally losing myself in this book and feeling such a deep connection to others and life and like I wasn't alone. I follow a gal on Instagram and she was reading this book and going through some hard times and I was going through some stuff. I got this book based off of her recommendation and I'm really glad I did. Broken Open by Elizabeth Lesser. I can't remember why I got this book. I know I was living in San Diego or in Encinitas at the time and was going through something. This book was so helpful to highlight how life transitions can either make us or break us and they can either help us grow or destroy us and offers just such a wonderful perspective on how to look at transitions because so often transitions are really challenging and even good ones can feel really heavy. There could be a period of grieving. This is just full of wonderful stories, advice on how to navigate those with a little bit more grace and understanding. A Return to Love. This is by Marianne Williamson. I came to this book when I got divorced I think it was eight years ago now and just moved down to San Diego and was just feeling incredibly lost. Started making the connection of self-worth and self-love being kind of the driving factors behind a lot of our choices and our behaviors. And I realized that my self-love and self-worth was crap. Basically didn't have any and I chose to marry somebody who wasn't a good person for me. This book just, I mean, I've, I've read this book and I've listened to it on Audible probably four or five times now. And it's just something that I come back to every time I just feel like I need a little bit of redirection or I've lost my way in the way of loving myself and how to do that. All right, so I just read this book in October. When I say I couldn't put it down, I literally could not put it down. In fact, actually that's a lie. I started it in August, was in the process of moving and then got distracted. And then I picked it back up right before I was diagnosed with cancer, read it in like a couple days. She is an incredible writer. It's a memoir about her experience going through leukemia at 24. Just the details that she pours into this book, Between Two Kingdoms. Her name is 
I don't know how to pronounce it, Solika um, Joard, I think. I'm probably butchering that and I'm so sorry. As somebody who went through my first medical chaos at 24, I felt so seen and so heard for the first time ever after reading this book or throughout the whole process of reading this book. If you are going through anything regarding your health, especially cancer, highly, highly recommend this book. All right, In the Face of Fear, and it's Buddhist Wisdoms for Challenging Times. After I moved to San Diego, I think it was seven years ago now, it was about nine months after my divorce, I went through one of the hardest times, not related to my health, just like personally, that I think I've ever been through. I moved to San Diego wanting to just get a clean start, a fresh start. I felt like I needed to be away from everything that I knew to really grow into the person that was begging to be in the world. How I ended up down there was just, thing was like so seamless. Divine intervention, it was mind blowing. When I got down there, it was like I just slammed into a brick wall. Nothing was working out the way that I thought it was going to work. It was about three months into moving down there, things started to slowly start evolving. My time down in Encinitas was better than I think that I could have imagined it once I finally kind of let go of what I thought it should look like. Came across this book in one of the bookstores down there. It just jumped out at me. I remember this book just really started to shift my perspective on how I was looking at all the changes in my life. And it's definitely a book I want to keep on coming back to. I wanna preface this one with saying that I don't consider myself a religious person. Although I do believe in a God, I am I'm always wrestling with what that means to me and what kind of God I believe in. Although I don't consider myself necessarily a Christian, I love talking about Christianity and I love learning about it. I grew up going to Christian camps and going to youth group and you know, constantly kind of wrestling with my beliefs around it. And this is one of my favorite authors who writes in the most real and raw and authentic way possible about Christian spirituality. And he's just so honest. And I think that him and Anne Lamont is another uh, the author that I love. Their painfully brutal honesty about being human and their relationship with their faith is so relatable. I've read this book a couple times and I've read Anne Lamott's book, Bird by Bird, several times too. Oh, I, I don't even have the words for them. I just, I could eat these books. I love them so much. <laughs> Untamed. So I will admit, I don't like jumping on the, the super, <laughs> trendy bandwagon. I don't feel like I am somebody that jumps on a lot of trends. And when COVID hit and the world shut down, this book popped into my life because I kept seeing it everywhere on Instagram. And I kind of begrudgingly ordered it. Like, I gotta see what everybody is talking about with this book. And I literally laid in bed for two days straight and read this whole thing. It was good. It was so relatable and it just gives you permission to let go of everything society tells you to be and just be yourself. And at 42, I'm still learning to do this on a daily basis and I'm still getting caught up in showing up in this world as the person I think the world wants me to be as opposed to just being who I am and saying, you know what, at the end of the day, the only person I have to answer to is myself. Definitely will come back to this book. I think that this would be a good book to come back to after I finish treatment because I think often after you close those those chapters, you kind of wrestle with finding your identity again. So maybe this will be a good, helpful reminder. All right, so Woman, Food, and God by Janine Roth. So as somebody who struggled with an eating disorder for about 10 years, from the time I was about 15, 16 to my later 20s, I had such a horrible, horrible relationship with food. For a long time, I had no idea that my relationship with food actually had nothing to do with the food itself. It had everything to do with different traumas that I'd been through, my love and lack of love for myself and lack of self-worth for myself. And I was using food to cope with all of that. So I was either binging and purging or 
I was orthorexic, so I would work out for hours and hours, or I would just like be so strict on what I ate. I read this book when I was down in San Diego. I just remember reading it. Everything was just making sense and clicking. Although I still sometimes struggle with body dysmorphia, controlling my food every now and then, I do have a different relationship with food and I do have a different relationship with myself. And I give myself permission to enjoy food and to enjoy the experience of eating. Although I do have dietary restrictions, you know, I work around that and I, I try not to deprive myself. I try to eat what I feel like eating. It is going to probably be a lifelong struggle. And I know that as I'm going through this latest health crisis, I feel myself wanting to start controlling it again because I can't control this. And so the, it is a daily struggle with having to remind myself that food is our fuel, food is enjoyment, food is joy, it's part of community. This book was just really eye-opening. So I think that if anybody is struggling with anything to do with controlling their food intake over exercising or your relationship with food in general. First of all, seek out help. Second of all, there's tons of resources like this book out there for you to start your journey and learning more about what's really going on. So this book I just started reading. It is called Who Ordered This Truckload of Dung? And I think I found it in one of the little libraries at my house. And it's again, inspiring stories from a Buddhist perspective. So far, my biggest takeaway has been this one particular quote I actually read yesterday morning. So I'm gonna read it to you really quick. The author is talking about a conversation that father had with him one day when he was younger. And the quote is, son, whatever you do in your life, know this, the door of my house will always be open for you. When I tell you a quote never landed harder, and I don't know why, it was this particular quote. But later that morning, I had the opportunity to put it into action when my brother and I kind of had a testy text exchange. I thought I was offering my help. He felt like I was stressing him out. I'm a bit of a planner and I, I kind of like to have my ducks in the row. And I was offering myself to like come pick him up to go wine tasting. And he basically just kind of like snapped back with the text that wasn't super nice, but not like crazy mean. I normally would respond back with like a passive aggressive thumbs up, but I just paused. I said, no, I'm not gonna do that. Put myself in his shoes a little bit. And then I went and did a little workout and I checked my phone again. He had written back and he said, thank you for you know offering that. I really appreciate it. His wife was still in bed. She had been sick. And so they just hadn't gotten to that point. I thought of this quote. I wrote back, I know I stress you out sometimes, but I will never stop offering my help to you because I love you very much. And later that day, he was just like, yeah, I read that. And he's like, whoa, that was a really good response. Oh, I love it when I can take something that I've read or learned and just put it into action. And I think that that is how real change comes about. So, this book. All right, so the last book is The Book of Awakening. I got this book last year. I started it on January 1st. It is a day by day book. So each day there is a different reading. I'm gonna start it again in January because honestly, I never, I only got like halfway through it and then not even halfway through it. I think I got three months into it. As I am about to approach just this really difficult time of starting treatment and then recovering from treatment and just figuring out what next steps are. I think this book may offer a nice little way to start my morning each day instead of getting on my phone right away or whatnot to kind of have a little time of reflection and, and just being present in what I'm going through. So, The Book of Awakening. I have linked all of the books, including this one, and you can start with me January 1st and go through it together. This is not an exhaustive list. There are so many incredible books. If you have a book that you think others should know about, please leave them in the comments below so everybody can see. I am so grateful you are here. Again, if you haven't subscribed, I would love if you would do so. Give me the thumbs up, hit the bell, do all the things, and I will see you in a few days.